Welcome to the Artist's Work Ethic Podcast. I'm Mike Pilak. I'm a screenwriter, actor, and filmmaker who's always looking to maximize my time and potential as I work to break in. In this podcast, I talk to artists of all kinds who have seen success in their fields about their process, habits, and work ethic. Today on the show is Chris Carter. Chris is a TV writer, producer, and director best known for creating The X-Files. Chris also created the shows Millennium, The Lone Gunman, Harsh Realm, and The After. The X-Files earned two primetime Emmys out of 16 nominations and five Golden Globes out of 12 nominations. In addition to creating the show, Chris wrote and or directed many episodes throughout the show's run. I also recently launched my Substack. I'll be putting out some writing through Substack each week, and that's also how you can stay up to date on this podcast, as well as other projects I'm involved in. I hope you'll subscribe to read along at mikepelak.substack.com. That's M-I-K-E-P-E-L-A-K.substack.com. A couple quick things before we jump into the episode. I've talked in the past about myself working on breaking into screenwriting. Please check out blackoilfilms.com slash screenwriting. There you can check out some of the screenplays I've written. I have the first 10 pages of each one uploaded, but feel free to email me at theartistsworkethicpodcast at gmail.com, and I'd be happy to send you a full script if you're interested in reading. Last thing before we get into the episode, I would love anyone listening to subscribe, rate, and review the Artist's Work Ethic podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. It really helps us put the show out there for more people to listen to. All right, Chris, thank you for coming on with me today. Welcome. Thanks, Mike. So going back to your early days, you know, growing up at the beginning of your career, you know, your formative years, do you think your work ethic comes from uh, how you were raised or some external factor in your life? I always talk about DIY and punk rock really inspired me to get out and just do things and work hard and get it done. What was that for you? I had a good work ethic as a kid. Uh, it was instilled in me. My grandparents were dairy farmers. And so to be a dairy farmer, we've got to get very early. Uh, my my dad was in heavy construction. He got it very early. So that was always there. Also, uh, I, I hear my mom saying, you don't know what a hard day's work is. <laughs> so uh, that still rings in my ears. I have to say that uh, I, I did a lot of work while I was in college that was interesting, good for me. Uh, I worked as a carpenter. I learned how to build things from the ground up, literally. Uh, I became a kind of, I'm not sure I can call it an expert in uh, television, but uh, I put myself through college as a production potter. So I sat at a potter's wheel, mostly by myself at night, but uh, with uh, eight other people during the day. And uh, I got to watch TV while I was doing it. So uh, I, I knew everything about almost every TV show. It was, I, I guess, those were my formative years. Sounds like it was a, a two birds with one stone type of situation. Huh? Yeah, exactly. So once you did see some success in your career, you know, particularly with the X-Files, how did that impact the way you work or, or what changed? You know, did things, I assume things got more chaotic for you, but how did you adapt your productivity and your work to that environment? It was trial by fire. <laughs> Previous to uh, the X-Files, uh, I had a short-lived uh, series on uh, the Disney Sunday movie Wheel, they called it. I think it was eight episodes, and uh, it was, you know, eight episodes is hard work. People are doing eight to 10 to 12 episodes a season now on, on the streamers. So when all of a sudden, um, the first year of the X-Files, we did 25 episodes, it was... Uh, you just, you're always trying to uh, keep, just keep your head above water. I learned on the job about productivity. And even though I know, knew how to do the job, I didn't know how to do it at that uh, scale. But what I was fortunate enough to do was hire the right people who had done it, who knew how to budget time, how to organize a lot of creative people to basically create a roadmap to uh, that success. But uh, it, 
it, it's funny. I tell people that uh, the X Files was successful, but I really didn't have a time to uh, the time to appreciate it while we were doing it because we were working so hard. We did the first three years of the show. I mean, uh, it was we did seventy two episodes. And uh, now uh, a show that does 72 episodes is considered to be, you know, one of the longest running streamers on television. Sure. I mean, I think that a big part of success of any kind, whether it's personal or professional, is the people you surround yourself with. And it sounds, you know, whether it's your family, your friends, the people supporting you, you know, and, and in your case, you were able to build out, like you said, a great team, which kind of yeah. lifted the, the whole boat up. Yeah, hiring the right people is uh, paramount. And I, I was lucky to do that. The other thing you have to do, and everyone has to do on the show, a part of productivity is uh, avoiding pitfalls. Uh, and there are plenty along the way. And especially early in the, uh, the show, you can make a wrong turn, you can hit a dead end, and uh, it could be the, you know, the life of the show. Casting is all important to the show. I have to say that probably is uh, one of the most important thing, if not the most important thing on the show, but hiring the people who really bring the project, the script to life. If you've got people who know their, their work, uh, how to do that work, uh, they are always making the work that you do better. Well, to that point, you've collaborated with a, a lot of great actors and writers and directors uh, you know, art departments, everything along your career. What's something that you've learned from someone else that you've been able to pick up and, you know, identify whether it's something super practical or something core, you know, more theoretical and apply uh, to your own career? I can tell you one thing that I was very thankful for was uh, the writers Morgan and Wong had worked on Stephen Cannell shows. And uh, so they knew about productivity and they knew about output and they knew about budgeting time and they knew about uh, how to make things good. The thing that they brought to the show, wh which is a really, I'll call it fundamental thing, is they brought a bulletin board and three by five cards. And uh, that's the way we uh, plotted the show from uh, right from the beginning. I had worked on a whiteboard prior to that, and uh, it was kind of sloppy and it was kind of uh, haphazard. They brought not only that bullet board and those three by five cards, but Glenn Morgan brought like I would call it perfect handwriting. And that became a signature of the uh, script side of the show was uh, everyone tried to copy that uh, perfect handwriting. It almost brings a calm to the room, right? It does actually, and uh, it's beautiful. A, a really a good board, as we call them, a, a really beautifully plotted board is a thing of beauty, a, a perfect mosaic. A, a common theme on this show I, that I've talked to, you know, from musicians to writers to directors to actors to chefs, all of that, is that the the people who do end up with some success with a career in the arts tend to do things that maybe others won't and, you know, kind of going above and beyond. I always like to call it creating your own luck and, and being able to pinpoint that opportunity and step through the door when the door opens. Yeah. Do you have a, you know, an example in your career that maybe happened to you that you felt like you did something that separated yourself from the masses that, you know, helped to propel yourself forward? I can tell you that uh, when I, I got my first job in Hollywood at uh, Disney, right when it was changing from, call it the old Disney to the new Disney run by Michael Eisner and Jeff Katzenberg. And I was hired by Jeff Katzenberg to write movies because I had written a movie that he liked. And uh, even though it never got made, it, it got me in the door. So I, it gave me a three picture deal, uh, an office and a secretary, and I was on my way. But what I did, because it, it was all hands on deck there trying to uh, fill up television slots, the Disney Sunday movie in particular, uh, these television producers would just walk by my office and knock on the door and say, hey, are you interested in doing a, an episode of the Disney Sunday movie? And I would, I said no to everyone, I, no to anyone. I didn't say no to anyone. 
that was uh, I was very fortunate for that because uh, it taught me first how to work under pressure and a deadline and how to uh, see your product go from beginning to end very quickly. But it also subsequent to that taught me how to produce. Uh, I, I had written a pilot for NBC and uh, even though it didn't go, they were very pleased with the work. Uh, they said, what do you want to do next? I said, I want to produce. I was just a writer then I, because I realized I had to produce my own work if I wanted it to turn out like I uh, wanted it to. They offered me three shows. I said, great, we can put you on one of these three shows. And they said, we can put you on Miami Vice which was maybe the hottest show on television then. We can put you on, that was a Michael Mann show. We can put you on Michael Mann's Vegas, which was, uh, you know, another dark, interesting, dramatic show. Or we can put you on this show called Rags to Riches, which is Joseph Bologna and five, five young dancing girls, basically breaking into song three or four times an hour. And so I looked, and so the obvious thing uh, you would think would be to uh, choose Miami Vice or Vegas or Las, Las Vegas, it may have been called. But I looked at that show, Miami Vice, and I saw that all the writing producers were in Los Angeles, and the show was actually produced in Miami, shot in Miami. I looked at uh, Las Vegas, same thing. The writers were in Los Angeles, and the uh, show was produced in Las Vegas. And so I said, I'll take Rags to Riches because it was produced uh, in Culver City. It was a really great choice. I worked under a guy named Lynn Hill, who was a kind of titan in the movie of the week realm. He was producing the series. He let me do everything. I got to work with, first I got to work with skilled writers, people who had done the job before. But then I got to work, I got to work with choreographers. I got to work with lyricists. I got to cast, I got to uh, work in all phases of production. And so it really set me up for uh, what I would end up doing in a, a leadership capacity. Yeah, it sounds like you put a lot more tools in your tool belt. You know, it's kind of a cliche saying, but, you know, it was the it was the first prep, I guess. It, it was. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'm forever grateful for it. So you, you, you had... You've had instances, I'm sure, in your career, you know, setbacks and rejections as as we all do, you know, whether it was that early pilot that NBC didn't want to pick up. And how have you throughout your career pushed through those and kind of been able to, you know, it's probably more mental than anything, but mentally continue on and, you know, open up final draft and start that next script yeah. when maybe you're thinking Ugh, this, I, I don't know if I'm, if I'm still doing, you know, if, if I'm done with this or not. You've got to get used to uh, rejection, failure, call it what you will, because it's a business of failure. Probably more than nine out of 10 things uh, succeed. And so uh, you, if you get lucky and you choose the right cast and you have a good script and you hire the right director and you do all the other things that you need to do, which is uh, cast uh, actors surrounding your leads, uh, wardrobe, the right editor or right editors in the case of a series, that is something that, uh, it's something that I, I, I learned to do very early on. And I realized that it, it's, it's not a job you do alone. Yeah. I mean, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier of just that, that team that you're surrounding yourself with. I, when, when you're sitting down to write a script, whether it's a, you know, a brand new series, it's, you know, the whatever episode of whatever season within a series uh a feature what's your kind of very high level you know your process when you sit down to start that new script first of all uh there's always a gun to your head <laughs> and uh, deadlines have a way of putting that gun to your head and um so that's something that uh if you can set yourself dead up with deadlines uh, the work will be better for it, I think. Funny, I saw an interview or an article on, in the New York Times yesterday about no, uh, Nora Roberts, and she said uh, she puts her butt in the chair and her fingers on the keyboard. And that's exactly what I always tell people. Uh, you're 90% of the way there if you can actually sit down without distraction and wait for that ball to start rolling down the hill, gathering snow, and, uh, you know, it, it, 
if you've got a really good snowball at the end, you uh, you've done your job right. Sure, and and sometimes you have to start kicking that ball right down the hill before it's going to pick up any snow. You you do. I was talking earlier to you about uh, work ethic and about my forebears being early risers. I had to uh, when the show moved from Vancouver to Los Angeles. I had a routine where the, basically in, in uh, production, uh, if you arrive at nine, the phones are already ringing and you're putting out fires and taking care of business. And I would get up at 3.30 in the morning. Uh, I would be at the Starbucks in Venice, California uh, at four o'clock in the morning to get my uh, supercharge. And uh, I got to, <laughs> it's funny, when I, uh, during that time, I got uh, friendly with all the uh, homeless people in the area. <laughs> Starbucks gave them free coffee. So they were there with me. So that was uh, an education in itself. But uh, I would get up and uh, before the phone started ringing and try to do good work before nine o'clock. And that was really helpful. And, uh, you know, writers talk about writing in the morning, writing in the afternoon, writing in the evening. Good television writer has to do it all. He has to be able to write. She has to be able to write anywhere, any time, any place. That's something you learn very quickly in series television. You better, if you're like, I traveled back and forth to Vancouver when the show was first produced. If I wasn't writing on the plane, uh, I, I was wasting a whole lot of time. And there's, there is a picture of me my assistant took in Vancouver, and I'm sitting uh, in a park, and we're staging uh, a scene, and uh, I'm sitting uh, on a park bench with my head down on uh, looking at my computer. And that was basically, a, that's, I think, indicative of uh, what a, what a uh, writer, producer, and television does. Well, the world's not waiting for you, you know? <laughs> exactly. So how important would you say that persistence and perseverance are to a, a successful career, we'll call it, in the arts? Uh, you know, it's, and perseverance is everything. You know, uh, it's funny, uh, you know, there's that expression that 90% of success is showing up. And uh, I uh, once said that to uh, a house painter. And he said, the other 10% is cleaning up. Uh, I think that could be said for a television producer too. There's a lot of mopping up and a lot of false starts. Persistence is what gets you across the finish line. Is there anything that you want to plug or talk about before we go? No, I'm working on stuff. I uh, When I finished the show, I was, I think, 45 years old. And I said, now I'm going surfing because I had you know, been a surfer all my life and uh I had quit surfing for about 10 years and uh, it was uh, an opportunity to do something I loved while I still had a bit of my youth left. Uh, and uh, I still try to surf as often as possible. So what am I plugging? I'm plugging, enjoy your success and be forever grateful for it. Love that. Chris, thank you for coming on with me today. Like Thank you so much for listening today. Please subscribe to the Artist Work Ethic Podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts, and please rate and review the show. Follow us on Instagram at The Artist's Work Ethic, and check out theartistsworkethic.com.